Ryan Altano. What's up, everybody? Welcome to the PlayStation Experience. Who here loves Sucker Punch? Who here is incredibly excited and mystified for that trailer we just saw? Who here wants to find out just a little bit more about it today? Well, you're in the right place. I'm Brian Altano. Thank you all so much for coming. I'd like to introduce an incredible group of creative people. Ladies and gentlemen, Sucker Punch. That's oh, so amazing. Cool. Wow. Is there room for you? I'll sit on oh, Jason's lap. Here. Oh. Oh, Couches are the hardest part of video game <laughs> development. <laughs> there we go. Get cozy. <laughs> on it. Hi, guys. Hey. Hi. Hello. Uh, I want to go down the, the row real quick, uh, introduce you, each other, uh, let, us, let us know what you do for the studio, and uh, we'll start talking about the game. So what's up? Uh, my name's Nate Fox. I'm the creative director. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Give it up. <laughs> I salute the person who woos first. <laughs> Takes courage. Uh, my name's Jason Connell. I work on creative direction, but I'm also the art director for the project. I'm Billy Harper. I'm the animation director. Yeah! And I'm Ryuhei Katami. I'm the associate producer for this title. Guys, thank you so much for coming today. Uh, Ghost of Tsushima is the next game from Sucker Punch. We've seen the trailer. Tell me about it. Start up. Cool, nailed it. Oh. Perfect. <laughs> <laughs> well, it is a, it's been a labor of love uh, getting from the original concept through to the trailer itself. It was something that we had a really strong vision for. And we were excited, very excited. What? He, and he wanted to know about the game. Oh, the game. What is the game about? <laughs> well, you are the guy <laughs> talking about the I game. Mean, I mean, clearly we practiced this. Yeah, yeah, we practiced really hard. Yeah. Ghost of Tsushima is about the Mongol invasion of Tsushima Island in the year 1274. You play as a samurai. <laughs> a samurai that survives <laughs> and fights back and develops the technique of the ghost. That was so much That was beautiful. He's so, he's so first, good at this. First woo, again. <laughs> you get a trophy Same for person. that. <laughs> so what does it take to create a trailer like this? I mean, we, we've seen it now. That we're picking apart every detail of it. I imagine this is an incredible amount of work. Yeah, it's a, it's a lot of work. Uh, you know, depending on where you're at in your project, you have to kind of figure out, um, when you start wanting to share it with your fans, you have to figure out what's the most important thing that you want to share. And that's where it all starts. For like, and for us, transport people back to feudal Japan and uh, showcase this, 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 this thing that really happened uh, and becoming a samurai. But then after that, it's super creative. It's all about the, the tone, which I quite really like the tone of the trailer, um, the, the feeling of the, the place. Then you get into like cinematography, uh, lighting, and concept. Like All of this stuff applies straight to the game. And, as a general rule, since we do all of our trailers in-house, as a general rule, we like to uh, make sure that the things that we're making for our trailers are actually locations in the world. So all of those places are actually locations in the world. Yeah. Okay, so everything we saw there, I'm, I'm looking at that and I'm like, I can go there. Yeah. Absolutely. See, why don't they make more <laughs> video game trailers like that? They're just like, here's a film that we made. You watch the whole thing. It has nothing yeah. to do with our game. That's awesome. That's very good to hear. That was one of the most fun parts of the whole process. You're kind of like location scouting. Yeah. Just flying around through the game, finding these areas, and, and then just putting a lens on it. And everything else just flows from there. It's pretty awesome. Yeah. I mean, it it kind of just reflects the, the coolness, right? Like, who doesn't want to go to feudal Japan? And those are the places you want to go. So make them, put them in the trailer, and yeah. so right. we make sure that they're in there so you can experience them. Yeah. And I think that's like what's so fantastic about video games. Like you say, who wants to go to feudal Japan? And I'm like, I don't because I would die. <laughs> but I do in a sucker punch game. And luckily, you're going to let me. Yeah. 
So what are some of the challenges in creating a trailer like this? I mean, I imagine that there are so many ideas you want to put in and so many secrets you want to hold back and then probably lots of infighting. <laughs> See? Only a little bit. <laughs> Just a little bit. Right at the beginning, you yeah. know, we get over it. We, I, we all bruise easily, so therefore we don't fight that much. Um, uh, I think the biggest challenge is, is trying to find the, the voice of each character that you're going to show. Um, and in this particular case, one of the largest characters um, is the world. Um, and really, as Jason said, like starting out the process, looking at the locations, um, and then finding the voice of the con ended up being that spark uh, that, that started us down the path. Yeah, and it wasn't our first one, right? Like, nope, like, definitely we not. We didn't start there. We're like, oh, yeah, let's do the con's voice. <laughs> not exactly where we started, you know, but uh, highly iterative team, you know, small group of people. And uh, our creative director of video, videography work, he uh, came up with this idea of trying to use the cons voice from a shoot that uh, Dave had done with yeah. Patrick. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it, let's be honest. It was a sweet, weird idea from oh. left field. Yeah, it was. Yeah. I remember Dave, like, he, he just came out and he's like, because he was doing selects from one of our mocap mo shoot. He was just going through and like picking out uh, what we're going to do for a regular scene. Yeah. And he came out and he's like, oh my God, this is so awesome. Patrick sounds great. This scene is great. Leave me alone. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and he locked, himself, he locked himself in the editing room and like came out. And, and that became the whole trailer. Right? Yeah. Yeah. So all that has to kind of come together, right? I mean, there's an order to it. You don't just go like, well, we start with the VO, or we have the we have the game, we have footage, and then we have this music. It all sort of gels, right? Is, were, were you worried at any given moment that like each part of it individually wasn't connecting the Every way day. you wanted to? Every day. Every moment. <laughs> See, video, making video games is just it, it, like to me from the outside looking in. I don't make games. I just yeah. talk about them. It seems like consistently terrifying. Oh yeah, I think it's consistently terrible. It's it's yeah. it's a lot of up and downs, and that's that's a, the fun the fun part of it though, because uh, you know you you see an idea, you're really excited about it, and you might realize that maybe that's not the best idea, and then all of a sudden somebody else comes up with something mm -hmm. and throws it you know ten feet higher, and you get excited again. So just it's just throwing throwing ideas out like that. So are you are you guys really consistently terrified? Yes. yes. Really? Oh God. Creatively, the it's number hard. of fever dreams. <laughs> oh. It's just. Crazy. This is a therapy couch. Technically. Yeah. Wow. So, yeah. He didn't know. Yeah. Can't let it out. <laughs> Are you just hearing about this for the first time? They come off as very confident. This is the real reason I brought you all here today. Yeah. I'll, yeah. I'll <laughs> let out our inner fears of game development. Yeah. That's you know being a parent, you just act like you know what you're doing. Mm -hmm. I mean, and they all the conversations you, it till you make have it. is like, well, calm and like you point out all the issues, and you're like, okay, yeah, we'll take it into consideration. Under the surface, we're the duck. <laughs> yeah. Like with the yeah, right. What's yeah. What's going on? Rio, were you terrified about anything in that trailer? Yep. And it probably is not in the trailer now. It's not in the trailer. <laughs> yeah. yeah. We took it out. <laughs> yeah, because um, we actually have a team in Japan who helped a huge deal with this uh, trailer, as well as our team in San Mateo. And we all worked uh, collaboratively uh, in you know, making sure that we're hitting the right moments in this uh, trailer. And we ensure that you know, the representation is uh, respective to the Japanese yeah. culture, and that's a huge uh, part of the team. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So it sounds like some things <coughs> didn't make it in there, but what did make it in there is a lot. Um, we're mm -hmm. seeing some weather effects. We're seeing some day-night stuff. We're seeing a lot of weapons. Is this basically intentional? Like, is everything in there? Are you trying to tell players like this is something you will be able to find, you'll be able to do? There is definitely every shot has. Uh, depending on the, the level, but there is very, very intentional choices that we made for every single shot. So for example, the uh, opening shot that's uh, in the Pampas grass, the Suzuki grass, mm -hmm. um, that, uh, that was not, uh, there's was, there was some people that suggested, oh, let's make this, this beautiful blue sky, you know, sunny day with the sunset, but that shot actually starts off with the storm behind it, and that's, that's, there's intention behind that. Like it's, it's a taste of things to come and sets the tone. So whether it's as small as that or, you know, various other things, that's, that's the kind of choices I think we made in the trailer, especially when it comes to, like, weather and lighting and color right. and all that. You're kind of saying, like, hey. It's serious. Hey, <laughs> we're going to get that. <laughs> that's, a, that's a good tonal statement, though, right? Yeah. Things are not okay 
No. In Tsushima. <laughs> no. 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 Very not. Which is good for video games, right? Right. Because, you know. You need conflict. Yeah. I don't want to play a game drama, games, okay. Brian. I don't know if you know that. Yeah, yeah, I'm picking up on it. <laughs> I think it's like if when you, when you look at a beautiful world in a video game, and video games are escapism, right? You do want to just kind of relax a little bit. You want to kind of sit back and go like, this is a great place to be. But after a while, you're like, I got I to gotta do something, right? Well, particularly when you have a three-foot razor on your hip. Is that the technical term for it? Yeah. Wait, I, yeah. That's what we call it. Yeah, a three-foot razor. Well, it's kind of, who doesn't, I mean, you have one, you want to use it. Yeah. I you mean, can't just carry it around. It's too no, heavy to, man. Not, to not use. No. If I give you a lightsaber right now, you wouldn't chop this chair in half. If I had a lightsaber right now, I would chop everything in this room in half. Yeah. <laughs> wow. And no offense to any of you, but come on, you would do this. <laughs> yeah. It's a lightsaber. Yeah. Um, Note to self. <laughs> No lightsabers for Brian. Uh, so I want to talk a little bit more about how the trailer came together, um, because right now it is the biggest piece of, of media that you guys have kind of given us to chew on. Um, and you have some kind of like behind the scenes elements that made it into this trailer. Um, mm -hmm. let's, let's, let's talk about that a little bit, the sort of the, just the process through all of this. Oh, yeah. That was... <laughs> oh, go, go for it. Man. That was... You mo-capped a horse. Yeah. Yes. This happened. Two horses. Yeah, everyone's so calm about this. Oh, oh yeah, that was the oh. time we mo-capped a horse. You mo-capped a horse. It's got, it's got mo-cap socks on. And Dude. How, like, there's oh, two yeah. horses. You put I get pong so, balls on. I get so excited when I see this. Like, as an animation director, this was the scariest shot. Like, I actually had to pitch the production of this shot for it to get approved to get in <laughs> because we were doing something that we hadn't done before. Right. Um, but at the same time, it was another one of those accelerating things. Like, um, uh, oddly enough, you know, what would you guess would be the biggest uh, thing you had to deal with on stage with those huge beasts? With a horse? Can I tell you? Yes. Can I say it? Tell us. It's the poop. No. What? <laughs> no. I think there was like three potty breaks that happened during the entire day. Is that day. what they call them? Potty I, I, Well, you know, my kids are watching, I hope. Okay, yeah. So... I'm keeping it clean. Mm -hmm. uh, no, it's markers. Like, mm. they, every shoot, we had a gazillion markers on the horses, and we had three people that would follow around behind afterwards to pick up the markers, then oh, yeah, put them one. on as quick as they could. Yeah, one falls off. Oh, yeah. Right, right there. there in the, in the, yeah. In the video. So horses yeah. don't like wearing stickers. A lot of oh. little girls are going to be devastated by that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it was really impressive, though. They, they, they had a, a sugar-based glue that they would... Uh, apply, and they had multiple horses that they would rotate out so they could have breaks and everything like that. So how many horses did you have in the shoot? Uh, four. four. Four were involved in the what? shoot. Did they have a union? Huh? Yeah. They had really good representation. Yeah. They Very good. take breaks yeah. often? It's four horses yeah. Yeah. a gang. Yeah. Wow. It's a gang of horses. <laughs> Everyone yes. knows that. Uh, so that sounds fascinating. So what are, we, what are we looking at here? This is what the final, this is, we this brought is the, the horses in, yeah. they didn't eat the sugar stickers, they didn't poop <laughs> too much, and, uh, and somehow th that becomes this. This is yeah, what I find incredible about game design. Yeah. yeah. And the, the really big thing about it is that this wasn't a, a one-off. Um, this was a test for us to see if we were going to be able to do this sort of thing for the game. And one of the biggest bonuses of the entire thing is like coming back and like the report on this is this is amazing. We're going to continue to work with um, uh, Fritz uh, and and his crew uh, with the Warhorse Foundation. Um, and um, that's so, an awesome foundation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's a great foundation. <laughs> it's Do you remember the names of any of these horses that now look it's so great question, Nate. intimidating and like they're going to trample you to death? Uh, yes, the one that was my favorite. Yeah was Sugar Cube. <laughs> Aw, that's a sweet name for yeah. a war horse. That is, yeah. for a war horse. It was the meanest Sugar Thank Cube, you. the war horse. Yeah. So you talked about being scared leading up to uh, the release of the trailer, but now it's out there, and I did a thing I don't try to do often. I read the YouTube comments. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> but people are incredibly excited about this. People are really happy. What's, what's the mood at the studio like now? Is there relief, or is this now you have to push into the next phase now. It's awesome. It's awesome? It's yeah. so awesome. It's so good I mean, here. imagine you've been working on something and you really care about it, and you can't tell anyone, no one, because your producer it threatens you every day <laughs> with termination if you tell anyone, and then it goes out public. It's great. Suddenly you can share this thing that you've been, uh, you know, dreaming about at night, you know, 
working on yeah. all the time and uh, see if people are as excited about it as you are. Did it and feel it's like a huge keep, relief? Does it feel like keeping a secret? Oh yeah. And then what well, was I mean you, you literally are, right? Yeah. Oh yeah. Saying, you're like a yeah. you're like a spy. <laughs> you can't you have to watch what you say when you're drinking in a bar. Yeah. Because that's, that should be that's a good rule for, for always. Oh, but it, normally we don't go by that rule. <laughs> yeah, we do not follow yeah, that yeah. rule. No, I've never okay. heard you that guys should follow <laughs> some rules. That, that's that's a good rule. That's, that's a, <laughs> if you're ever in Bellevue, Washington. Oh god, don't uh -huh. do it. Yeah. Our don't, studio don't is there. <laughs> uh, Valve, Bungie. There are all these video game yeah. studios, and so you'll go to a bar, and you'll be like, hello, and you'll hear things. <laughs> you, you just hear four guys sitting around, I'm so tired of making these infamous games, now it's time for Feudal Japan, and you just I'm, write it down. It, it, it yeah. is. Uh, it is. how it happened. It happened. Don't tell me that. I work for IGN. We'll send someone to that bar. <laughs> send Marty Sleeva to that bar. He loves that bar. It would work. Well, we would just drink with him. <laughs> well, that makes journalism easier. So. Uh, the, the trailer gets out there, all of you are now relieved, yeah. but now, obviously, you kick into the next phase, right? Yep. yep. So I wanted to talk a little bit about, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Let's kick segue. I just reminded you guys you have to make the game now. So <laughs> yeah. Finish yeah. this now. Uh, um, oh. Sly Cooper. <laughs> right? Infamous. I was talking to you guys backstage about how cool Infamous is because it, it nails Seattle. It was, it was there uh, for the PlayStation launch. Uh, the two are, are connected to me as just, it's just an incredible franchise. It's always been just so wonderful to me, especially through IGN. I feel like I've been there long enough. Those games kept going on long enough uh, while I was there covering them. Um, I've always loved your studio. And I think I just expected I would get another announcement for another Infamous game. I'd be like, cool, good to go. But instead, you're taking your studio in an entirely new direction, something I don't think anyone would have predicted unless they were at that bar where you were lying. Yeah. You, know. you were talking about it way too much. <laughs> you got to go to that bar. Um, <laughs> why? Why, why, this, why this new change for the studio? Why this, new, why this step in this new direction? Uh, you, you do something for a long time. You want to try something different. Yeah. You know? I mean, Creativity. Yeah. it's creatively uh, satisfying to be freaked out. <laughs> it is. Yeah. I mean, I love Infamous. I think it's great. Uh, but, you know, I also love creating art and love creating new worlds. So this is a good opportunity for us. And it's always best to challenge yourself. Like, yeah. you know, uh, it, it, you can be comfortable with, with an IP, with, with the world and the universe. You get really comfortable. And, you know, uh, it's, it's a creative process. And you kind of have to, like, shake yourself up every now and then. Right. Do something, yeah. you know, and take a risk. Um, and uh, this, was, this was definitely a risk, um, but one that was so worth taking yeah. uh, because we get to write a love letter to, to like one of our favorite uh, uh, genres, mm -hmm. really. Was, was everyone on board for this? Was this like, did you step in the room and go like, hey, we're, we're, going, we're leaving Seattle, we're going to feudal Japan? And everyone's like, hell yeah, and one guy's like, never! <laughs> was everyone all, all in? It was, it was, people were pretty excited. <laughs> uh, you know, you, know uh, you set off to make a new, a new project. You know, um, you know, there's, you dabble in an idea here, dabble here, and then you hit the thing that you've really been wanting to make, and I think the whole studio kind of just lit up, and we were, it, yeah. was, it was crazy. That first, the first month or two of production, or pre-production on, on the project, yeah. oh my God, so much stuff got done, yeah. and I think that's purely because people are super motivated, super excited. And, uh, and also, it kind of just writes itself. You say, like, feudal, you know, feudal Japan, you know, samurai, big world. You know, there's, people start coming up with all kinds of scenarios. Right. So it's, it's great. Yeah. I, I mean, because we always try to focus on the player fantasy. Mm -hmm. It's really yeah. important to us. Uh, and, you know, you have ideas, and you, you kind of try them. And it's like, oh, this could be something. This could be something. And you, you, you move around. And then this is one where it's just like, oh, my gosh. It's easy to, easy to say. Like, open world. Samurai game. Yeah. Boom. And everybody gets excited. Right. Um, yeah. Him especially. <laughs> There's another wooer. Yeah. So it's, it's like, I feel like it changes the entire, the entire tone at the studio, right? Like everyone all of a sudden, like you take, I mean, I'm sure you kept some Seattle posters up on the wall. I don't know why I think like you dress your, your studio like you're like a, t like a teenage boy set on a sitcom. <laughs> oh, we do. It's like, oh, we love we Seattle. We totally do. Right? Yeah. Yeah. But I mean, so all of a sudden, like you are now in a different century, you're talking about things in a different way. There's, there's different research all over the walls, right? 
Yes. You know, one thing that's really cool about this game that we've never done before, uh, uh, you actually have to learn every day <laughs> making this game, right? Oh, yeah. yeah. Like, it's a lot you're making learning. Infamous set in Seattle. You're like, I, I think go, I got go, this. Go outside. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. But then you're trying to recreate uh, Kamakura era Japan. Yeah. And, you realize you know nothing. And yeah. so you, every day, you keep learning. You keep asking questions to somebody and who actually knows something. And I keep learning every day because you ask questions and I don't know the answers right <laughs> away. So like, it really helps um, study yeah. about my country, which is weird. <laughs> you should, you're kind of expected to know more, but people don't. I think um, even people in Japan right now don't know much about Kamakura history. It's such a minor period in the uh, span of Japanese history. Uh, Tsushima itself is also a small island in Japan. It's not a, a major destination, so it's great that we're picking that spot and uh, opening the gates to interest. I don't even think I could name all 50 states in America, and I've been here <laughs> my entire life. I needed, like, the Animaniacs to help me with that. Uh, so, yeah, yeah, shout out to Animaniacs. So then, so then, <laughs> then, then why this era? Like, what does this sort of afford the storytelling, because it, if it's something that you have to, I understand the challenge of being an artist and saying like, this is something we figured out and we wanted to challenge ourselves and do something new, a new creative endeavor, but why this specifically? Why, why tell a story here? Yep. Dude, go, get, go ahead. Maybe a couple answers. I don't, yeah. I don't, I don't, you, one you of you start, should, you start. Should, yeah, one of you should have this down, right? <laughs> it's, well, so, dude. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I, I personally feel like uh, you, I, I absolutely love, you know, samurai films, and um, a lot of them are, yeah, yes, yeah. Um, uh, a lot of them are an uh, Edo period mm. or near it, yeah. which is super awesome. Uh, it's not a very common uh, depiction of, you know, in film, it's not, a, or in games even, it's not a very common time period right. to bring back to. Yeah. And if you look at the uh, armor references and the styles and the things that they're wearing, it's really awesome. Like it's some really great stuff for us from us to pull from. So I know selfishly, I'm very excited that we 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 decided to go that direction yes. because there's a wealth of just just beautiful stuff to right. replicate yeah. and be inspired by. Mm -hmm. So for me, like when I was a kid, my dad and I watched Magnificent Seven. Mm. Yeah. Yes, we loved. I, I love that movie. Mm -hmm. And then one day, my dad was like, "All right, here." is the real story. Mm. This is what it's based off of. He breaks out Seven Samurai. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Kurosawa. And I fell in love. Your dad sounds awesome. Oh, yeah. It's awesome. Um, but it's, it, it, it taught me a lot, like, uh, you know, uh, the, the, the inspiration behind it and the acting choices. It was definitely different, but at its core, it was still this story. And when you swap out what I thought at the time was pretty cool, a pistol with a katana, it gets like 10 times cooler. Um, and so, so for me, that was, you know, I, I was sold the minute that I heard this is what we were doing. So we kind of have to thank your dad for, for this. Yeah. Thanks, yeah. Please, dad. yeah. Thank you, Billy's dad. Yes. <laughs> no. uh, what, what was Japan going through during this time in, in, in actual real life? I and mean, we've talked about it through the lens of pop culture and books and film, but what was, what was happening during then? The Mongols invaded. I mean, that's real. I mean, I, I, mean, I, I know, I, had a, I asked you so we could, you know, because I didn't actually know a lot. I didn't, I'm not great at history. All right, well, Please okay, tell me. This, all right, so this really happened, right? Okay. The Mongols roll up a few thousand guys and 80 samurai rode forth to meet them for real. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Can you picture that? No, that's, uh, that sounds terrifying. It sounds horrible, horrible, but they, they I mean, noble. Yeah. And, then, and it, it, it's, it's, that doesn't Scream make a video game to you? I mean, it, that's a political, you know, it's an event that happens, but, uh, I mean, it's, it, it, that is a, a, such a large historical event that also can overlap with action so well that it's exciting. Are you talking about, like, on the mainland? Like, what are the, the politics of... Well, how much are you going to tell me about how it connects into the game? You know, I'm just... <laughs> Shh. Crap. Wait, this is the part where we... Nudge yeah. him. Nudge him. Okay, yeah. <laughs> that, was the, that was the tell for stop talking. Yeah. But, um, historically, it's a significant time in Japanese history because this is the first 
recorded major invasion to Japan by a foreign force. So these samurais are actually facing an enemy that they've never seen before. Mm -hmm. They don't know what they're going to fight with, and they're just charging at them um, with what they know. So it's a great, it, it creates a chance for a great um, gameplay and event. It sounds awesome. And experience. Yes. Yeah. So I can't imagine the entire, the, all of this is, is going to be historically accurate, right? I mean, you have, you have the word ghost in the title. I don't know if that's a gameplay element yet. I'm kind of hoping it is. But are you taking creative liberties here? Are you, are you basing this entirely on actual historical event? Or are you sort of being inspired by and moving in, in, a, in, in your own direction? Absolutely inspired by. Like yeah. it, there's so much inspiration to take from this event and, and the time period and the location and the place. Uh, and it's just the jumping off point. Yeah. We want to tell our own original story and our own things that happen in, the, in our version of that world. Yeah. Um, and that's very, very important to us as, as storytellers. Um, it's also to pay, make sure that we pay respect right. to uh, the, so, the So family, the mm -hmm. So clan. So um, I think it's, uh, it's, it's absolutely like an inspirational jumping off point and a really awesome one at that. It gives us such a good uh, baseline. I mean, it's important to note that we're not making a historical simulation or documentary. This is, a, yeah. uh, f I guess, a fantasy Japan. Yeah. And we're using fictional characters, um, arts that's inspired from all over the place. But we're making sure that we're hitting the right tone yeah. of the age. Yeah. I think the, the trailer, actually, though, like some of yeah. the shots in the trailer, they're not... I don't, I don't know. I have not traveled all over Tsushima. We've been to Tsushima. Mm -hmm. But, uh, you know, there's no... When I went, there was not the, the perfect pampas grass field or the perfect wetland with the, the white flowers on it. Mm. But those are impressionistic views mm -hmm. of Japan that we've done a lot of research on mm. that we are going to inject into our game and our world because we want people to be able to go to those places. Mm -hmm. so. so that said, it does feel like you said there are areas that are based on real environments that you did get to see. Yeah. Yes. So did you find sort of a lot of visual resource or inspiration from actually visiting and, and seeing things firsthand? Yes, yes. We, uh, we, we took two trips um, to Japan, um, uh, two different groups that went, uh, but both teams made sure we, we visited uh, Tsushima. Um, and uh, the second trip, we were actually fortunate enough to be there during uh, a festival that they have to commemorate the attack because it happens around the time that the attack occurred uh, in uh, Komodahama. Um, and that was, that was an amazing experience, uh, getting to go and just visit an area and learn and then just discover how rich that, that history and culture still is there. Um, it was one of the, it was a life, you know, it was an opportunity of a lifetime. I mean, think about the scale of that. 750 uh, years later, they're still commemorating this. Right. Huge deal. Yeah. And powerful. I mean, well, you obviously took a lot of reference when we were there. Uh, yeah. Talked to a lot of people. But yes. It's, what, what, uh, anyway, it, it's weird. We went into one of the, uh, the high schools. Um, because they have some Mongol artifacts just on display next to the baseball trophies. Yes. No, no, one, no one stole them or broke them or anything? I feel like no, we've gone in no. five minutes here. No, no it's, it's really, I mean, it's just really fresh and alive. Right there, you walk in, and it's just sort of in everybody's memory. Yeah, and uh, I believe uh, one, one really uh, interesting thing that happened was something that... Uh, uh, Shu brought up yesterday when, <laughs> during his talk. Um, during our visit, we were fortunate enough to uh, actually uh, run into, by chance, um, uh, So uh, uh, Nakamasa, uh, who is one of the direct descendants of the So clan. Uh, and it was by chance at a restaurant. Um, and uh, the, the So clan was, was part of the 80 samurai that rode out onto the beach. And uh, in talking to him, uh, I. I kind of became so flustered and, and enamored and was just opening up and talking to him a lot about uh, the game and everything. And then uh, um, he gave me his business card. And, and I, was, I was like so set aback about that. And, and they invited us to come and like watch the, the ceremony that they have the night before. It's a smaller ceremony. It's much more intimate. Um, it's on the eve 
of the of the festival, and so therefore I was like, okay, I, I really need to I really need to to do something. I have to give him my card back. So I gave him my card back. I gave him my card, and uh, and that is actually what um, came close to having the game leap. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> because uh, imagine our surprise when a newspaper clipping uh, showed up uh, and uh, it had my business card in the Sushima newspaper. <laughs> uh, they can do that? They can just publish your business card in the newspaper there? Uh, evidently, we, luckily we come to find out they can't. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> there, there, there it is. is. Uh, yeah. That's, that was... Yeah. Was that a year ago? That was a year ago. That was a year ago. That was, that was, the, our... that was the day that I thought that I would never be allowed back in Sucker Punch ever again. Although, <laughs> that was our studio freakout day, oh, yeah. by the way. Oh, See, Billy's title on that business card? Emotionalist? Hey, he's an yeah. emotionalist. <laughs> that was the only thing that made me calmer, because I was going to take that seriously. Right. <laughs> I didn't even know that was the thing. You just you, I, like I don't I don't ever want to give anyone a business card now. They just put it in a newspaper. That's 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 so scary. Yeah, it's well. What's even scarier is is the the, the amount of details that were were in there. And uh, and one of these days we owe uh, we owe someone um, that was a friend of um, uh, Daisuke Shidate, who was one of the uh, uh, the guides that went with us on the on the J trip. Studio. J Studio with J Studio. Mm -hmm. uh, we, we owe him a, a big, most expensive bottle of sake because he brought it to his attention because he had family in Tsushima. And he saw this, and he saw Daisuke's uh, business card as well that's on there. And he said, hey, this is cool. And, uh, and then it ran through the chain and everything and ended up back to us. And so wow. that was the day it almost leaked. Yeah. So when basing a game on a real place that happened a long time ago. Uh, I'm imagining you don't have a ton of, of resources to work with. It's not like there were films and photographs to go on. I mean, you're looking at like illustrations and anecdotes and books and hearsay. Yeah. Is, it, is it difficult to sort of, to create something real based on something real um, with very little to go on like that? Or was there a lot preserved that you could find and mine and dig through? There are some shrines. I mean, there's yeah. some places for sure. Um, I think it's difficult, but it, it's actually super fun. It's you're just digging through history, learning about um, you know um, you know Shinto shrines and you know, Buddhist temples and pagodas and forest forestry and the types of species and trees. Like you, not 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 a lot of that stuff has changed. It's just grown in different ways. Right. So um, it's it's actually a really fun part of the job, at least from the visual side. Uh, to try to figure out what our landscape and world will look like as we draw from, from uh, you know, whatever context we can find, you know, photography, yeah. history books, uh, film. I mean, Actually, film's a great one. And Sucker Punch team has a huge amount of, you know, resource material that they <laughs> draw inspiration from. I'm actually surprised that they have so many. But, you know, we also have a great team in Japan who yeah. um, advise us on if it feels right. Yes. And again, it's, we're not making the real real Tsushima, but yeah. you know, we, we draw inspiration from many yeah. areas to yeah. make that. Yeah, it's been exciting for them as well, like mm -hmm. at the J-Studio. Uh, yep. uh, Jonah, who is another uh, person that went on the first trip with mm -hmm. these guys, you know, he's, he's a history buff, and he was actually, he, he loved being able to be involved in this because it is like, it's a, it's a history lesson about something that's right. it's, uh, really important, you know. Um, we're seeing right now some of the <laughs> reference uh, photos yeah. you guys took. Nice. Do you get, do you get to keep a, those? <laughs> No, oh, unfortunately. Awesome. I asked. Did you? <laughs> <laughs> you could just put clothes over it and try to sneak out. Yeah. <laughs> you should buy some. So yeah, these are obviously some of the reference photos that you guys took on your trip. Yeah. Uh, your That's the uh, 13 Assassins set right there. Oh my god. Yeah, That's which awesome. is a movie yeah. if none of you have seen 13 Assassins. Yes. You have to watch 13 Assassins. Great. And if you've ever listened to Wu-Tang, you've heard 13 Assassins. <laughs> <laughs> Wu-Tang. Wu-Tang. Um, so ob obviously this is incredibly challenging to put all this together, but you're, you're going through all of these different environments. And I think just looking at the reference photos, we're getting an idea of what a world like this could, mm -hmm. could be like as a playable experience. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's our, 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 our intention, right? Is to try to find these types of places like this or that, um, that previous shot was, uh, was that Joanna? That was Joanna. Yep. Standing in front of the, uh, an old, very old pagoda. You know, obviously, there's a pagoda in our in our trailer, so it's it's find, finding the right special things and, and making sure that they're in the game. So. Mm -hmm. And so, obviously, you have to balance historical accuracy with 
making a modern video game. Yeah. And you have to balance attention to detail with fun and also respecting the source material and the subject matter. Yeah. And I can't imagine that's an easy task. Yeah. It's made a lot easier by having people who you can fall back on that are knowledgeable. I mean, being a part of Sony means you can talk to people who are totally aware with Japanese cultural customs. Right. And the last thing we want to be is, you know, kind of uh, inadvertently offensive, right? Yeah. That's not what you want. Mm -hmm. You want to bring this fantasy to life and have it feel potent and authentic. And uh, part of that is actually trying to get the feeling that Billy had when he watched The Seven Samurai, because to Billy, that's what samurai are. In fact, to a lot of us, I mean, that's how I first we were exposed to yeah. samurai. Yeah. So, uh, you know, we're trying to capture that as well. I don't think that that is a, uh, actually, I don't know, how historically authentic is that movie? Not very. <laughs> <laughs> you see? Uh, see? It's so fast. Yeah. I mean, in, in Japan, uh, games and movies, they take liberties in creating uh, alternative history. It happens all the time. And yet you feel that um, sense of being in Japan or yeah. feeling that tone. So, yeah, I think it happens it all the time. It starts with, uh, in, in short of it, we have to think uh, about what team it means. It's not just Sucker Punch team and the people that work in Bellevue anymore. Mm -hmm. uh, we have Ryu down in uh, San Mateo. We have people at J Studio. We have uh, Sachi. Sorry, yeah, Sachi goes on motion, set with us. kind of uh, kind of like mannerisms and motion coach on set with mm -hmm. when uh, you know Nate is directing. Mm -hmm. We have uh, you know a Buddhist and Shinto guy who's a PhD in Buddhism, like is. It's very difficult to just jump right into that world. You have the guy that picks up the horse stickers. Yeah, got the yeah exactly. You got to have that. So. Tom. War, war yeah, horse. Dude. Tom, the horse sticker picker up. Yeah. Oh. Man, we love you. Be without you. Is he here? He's no. here tonight. No, he's got no. a no, scraggly he's, red he's out beard. There he brought he's four horses with him. Right <laughs> uh, so yeah, this is this is not this is not tourists trampling around a, a, a country and taking pictures and running home and making a game. This is this is respect. This is dedication this is this is a group of people who care yes and fortunately for us yes yay sorry didn't mean to cut, <laughs> didn't mean to cut you off man uh, uh, fortunately for us like Sony Sony the company and sucker punch like collaboration is such it's it's fused in our DNA mm -hmm. um, and so that part of the process wasn't foreign to us and we were very very uh, uh, pleasantly surprised to find out that branches all the way out throughout Sony, and so therefore it was it was um, it's a hard thing to go about doing, but it was it's it was an easy thing to start doing. Right. Mm. Well, you guys have been there with PlayStation for so long that I feel like at this point, you know, there's I, there's the same thing goes. There's a level of respect for you guys where they're sort of like, hey, like they're going to make art, and it's going to take a bit, and it's going to be gorgeous when it happens, but. Let's, let's give them all the love we can. Well, thank you. No, thanks. <laughs> oh, don't thank me. I mean, yeah. <laughs> I'd I would love it with you if you would like to uh, tell people about what a come on is. The what? The, 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 the come on? What, what that is. Come on. Yeah. Yes. Come on. This crest right here is yeah. like a family crest uh, that's used by um, Jap traditional Japanese families. So each family has their own unique um, style. And this, this one itself, we had a few conversations back and forth to get it right. Um, it's a, it's a, a fictional one, mm -hmm. but there was a few designs that um, Jason put together, and we had, to, uh, we had some conversation back yeah. and forth. Yeah. 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 So maybe you can elaborate on yeah, the yeah. design and, we and, had. You know, and, yeah, uh, Ryu and uh, J Studio helped us make sure that the one that we were picking was the most uh, uh, authentic and believable for the time period and, and uh, also matched, which finally somebody on Reddit the other day put yes. together that it is mountains mm -hmm. and that yes. it's because Tsushima Island has lots of mountains. Right. Uh, so that was, that was kind of cool. And this is the you know, family crest of mm -hmm. Jin Sakai. So. so we're happy with the final design. Yeah. yeah. Cool. We're proud of it. I like wearing it. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks to Reddit for discovering that those are mountains. Yes. yes. <laughs> uh, I wanted to go uh, down the road real quick and just have each one of you tell me what this game means to you and, and I guess what you're, what you're most excited about mm -hmm. in the future. Let's start with you, Nate. Oh, uh, well, I named my dog Lord Toranaga. <laughs> 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 yeah, after character in Shogun. So I am deep into it, wow. uh, really deep. So it is kind of a dream, it is a dream come true, mm -hmm. not kind of 
to be able to work all day thinking about this sort of fiction, these stories, these characters. And I'm uh, really excited to see it happen and make it, especially like the last month of production, mm -hmm. when you're playing effectively a finished game. But have you, have you ever played a game and thought, oh, this would be better if they just changed that? <laughs> if you're Everyone. making a game, you can do that. <laughs> it's great. Yeah. So you're playing a game you love, and you can make it better. It's the best feeling in the world, and that's what I'm most looking forward to. So yeah, you get to come in every day and go like, this kicks ass, but what if it kicked more ass? Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. That's so cool. Yeah. It's, it, is, it is wonderful. Yeah. <laughs> I like the build of it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's kind of a lame, lame, lame comment. <laughs> yeah. I, Pretty cool. I think um, for me, it's um, as an artist, building, building worlds, you know, like creating, you know, Seattle, sec, you know, Second Son is, is super fun. You do so much research and you immerse yourself in amateur photography and you know professional <coughs> photography and cinematography and other games you just d dive into this 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 th thing for years uh, and then you start getting to this point where you build your own version of it you build your own flavor of that right um, just like some of your favorite films right you build your own flavor of it and being able being able to with our trailer first saying here is our flavor of this has been super exciting and now um, we get to you know, make it into an entire world. And hopefully, the way I feel about when I see a photography with a beautiful pagoda or a bamboo forest, and I see this awesome, you know, place, hopefully when people play the game, they will feel that and maybe want to go visit Japan. Because if you haven't visited, you should. It's yes. an amazing place. So that's my dream. That's what I hope. Yep. You and I were talking uh, before we came out here about how in integral Infamous is to Seattle and vice versa. Yeah. And how, to me, like I visit that city a couple times a year, yeah. and I think of your game every time I get there, which to me is like the mark of a very successful video game, that you've recreated a real place, mm -hmm. and the pop culture has almost like replaced my memories of the real place. Yeah. And I'm just disappointed when I get there that I can't like run up walls and shoot right. lasers. Oh, you can. <laughs> well, maybe you can. <laughs> yeah, but uh, you get arrested. Yeah, you'll but get arrested. Yeah. It's, it's um, worth it. So yeah, I look forward to, s to seeing how you begin to tell that same kind of yeah. story with Japan. Yeah. So I knew it would happen. Nate stole my answer. <laughs> <laughs> no, actually, for me, what I'm the most excited about is Continuing to, uh, continuing to have an experience learning about the movements um, and the actions that our hero is going to get to do, mm -hmm. and knowing that the player is going to have that same experience. Mm -hmm. And like for me, it really is. I I get to play some of my favorite samurai stories, um, and uh, I'm looking forward to just doing more of it. And everyone stole my answer, so oh, man. Uh, let's see. <laughs> well, what I'm most looking forward to is just the incredible narrative that we're going to be driving. Mm -hmm. um, it's not every day that you get to work on a game that's not a shooter or a multi multiplayer game. Yes. So it's going to be awesome. Um, and lastly, I'm excited to, you know, excited to play this game that's a representation of my home country. It's a beautiful country, and I hope by playing through this game, you uh, get more interested uh, in Japan, so. Yeah. Yes. All right. Yeah. Can I ask a question to the crowd? Can, yeah, can you ask a question? All right. Of course. We, all right, I, I am a very lazy creative director, <laughs> and I often ask people for their opinion to try and decide what to do. We were arguing behind uh, the stage. This is a good chance to find out if people are into it. Uh, would you be interested in playing the game with Japanese dialogue? Yes. Yes. Hey! Woo! yes. I think it's a yes. I think it's a yes. All right. I don't know. <laughs> Noted. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Do it for the wooers. <laughs> All right. Well, I think we'll I think we'll I think see. they're into that. Yeah. 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 <laughs> nice. <What? laughs> this is what I love. <laughs> Eat my Weasley gloves. That's what you said. <laughs> that will be an option in this game, uh, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> that's Ghost of Tsushima. This is Sucker Punch. Thank you so much for joining us today Thank here you. at PlayStation Thank Experience. You Thank you guys. Thank you. Give it up for Sucker Punch. Yeah. Thank you. You guys are awesome. Thanks, guys.